Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for October the 31st of 2019, well, is titled the Ghostly Veil Nebula. So what do we see here? Well, this is an example of a supernova remnant, and this is not the way we normally see it. This is actually the entire nebula. We often see parts of this, and that's because it is such a large nebula extending across a good-sized portion of the sky. How large? Well, this would be about six full moons or three degrees in the sky, which is incredibly large. And you can imagine that if you could put six full moons across this, that would be how large it would appear in the sky. Now, it's not something you'd be able to see with your naked eye. It would be far too faint, but it is that large and extends that much. So often, individual portions of this are given their own names. So it actually looks as several different nebulae. And one of the common ones down to the lower right-hand side is actually the Witch's Broom Nebula. So a number of, and there are a number of other ones within here as well. That's one of the prominent ones and one that ties in with Halloween. So what this is, is an example of a supernova remnant or an exploded star. Now we see a number of these across the sky. When stars reach the end of their life, they can explode. And it depends on the exact mass of the star. Very, very massive stars will eventually explode and expel a lot of material out into space. There are a couple of ways this can happen. So there are two, ty two major types of supernovae. One is a massive star at the end of its life. The other is an already compact star, the remnant left over, that becomes unstable and explodes. So there are a couple different ways this can occur, but they both do send material uh, back out into space. Now this is where the heavy elements come from, or at least many of them. How do we produce all of these heavy elements? Well, the Big Bang produced hydrogen and helium, and that was it. Heavier elements had to be uh, created within stars. So stars fuse hydrogen into helium, and then helium into carbon, and so on up to iron. In order to create elements heavier than iron, you need something more massive, some massive source of energy. So a large supernova explosion produces a lot of energy and would be able to create those heavier elements, things of like gold and up to uranium that are much heavier elements and would then also then expels them back out into the universe. So the heavier elements here on Earth and within our bodies were once a part of a supernova, and that would have then enriched the material from which future generations of stars could have formed. So many of these supernovae going off early in the history of the universe would have enriched material for future generations of stars to be able to form planets like the Earth. So that was our picture of the day for October the 31st of 2019. It was titled The Ghostly Veil Nebula. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture. So until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.